What's up, YouTube? Welcome to my Lightning Strike Berserker leveling guide. I know a lot of people have been asking for a new updated leveling guide for 3.18. So rather than just using my old video and changing the title to 3.18 and being lazy, I decided to actually make a new guide. Although most of the information is pretty similar, but the tree is a little bit different just so we could easily transition over to Perseverance. So hopefully you use this leveling guide and there's enough time for you to try out a practice run. Now I did do a full practice run on this character and I did get all of the passive skill points and finish the game. As you can see, in roughly less than 4 hours playtime, I did leave it logged in for a while. So with practice, you can probably get everything down to like 3 hours and like 15 or 30 minutes if you're super fast at league launch. If you have experience with like speed running or something like that, but... It just goes to show you the character is more than capable of leveling super fast and having a smooth experience. So first off, before we dive into the act by act guide, we want to look at why Helix and two-handers. And a lot of people ask me, can I use another skill? And the simple answer is no, you can't use the other skill because Helix is just that much better. Helix is just completely OP due to his base damage and ability to hit more than once per attack. So you can see here the attack damage goes up to 250% of base. And also the attack speed is 110% of base, right? So these numbers are just absurd. And you can consider that for a single mob, Helix will usually hit twice. And for a big mob, it can hit three times. So you can pretty much consider that one Helix attack can be equivalent to 750% of base attack damage almost, right? And we're using two-handers because, because we want to scale the percent attack damage. And two-handers gives us a lot of flat attack damage and is really easy to scale. And Marauder is next to all of the two-hander nodes at the start. And we're mainly using a two-handed axe. There's another option to use a two-handed sword. And the reason we want to use a two-handed axe is pretty much so you can pick up Onslaught effect on the axe mastery. If you do want to use a sword, you can change up the tree a little bit. We only take one axe cluster in the leveling tree. Okay, so we get started in Act 1 where the game all begins, right? And you can follow along in this pop. I do have it in here, so you can click here for Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, and so on and so forth. And the level should be around the requirement of when you will actually finish the Act. So Act 1, you want to mule a Scion for Splitting Steel and Onslaught. And what this means, a lot of people don't know what muling means. And muling means you create a different character so that you can buy the skill gems offered through that class at the start. So you want to use Splitting Steel and you want to get Onslaught for Scion. I think you might be able to do a duelist too. I'm not 100% sure. And after that, you kill Hailwreck and you can buy Chance to Bleed, Ancestral Protect, the War Banner, and Frost Blink from the vendor. Now, once we used, allocate this node that gives us some Dex and Int, then we can use Frost Blink. And Frost Blink is a pretty good movement skill, and I think it's actually the best movement skill out of Dash and Frost Blink. At Lower Prison, we get Life Tap. We can link Life Tap later on to Spectral Helix or Splitting Steel if we somehow find a 4 link, but if you're stuck on a 3 link, you want to use Splitting Steel, Onslaught, and Chance to Bleed, Brutus, we end up getting our Leap Slam. So we'll pretty much be using Leap Slam as our main movement skill, and we'll be Frost Blinking on cooldown so that we can move across the zones faster. And once you get to Caverns, before Mervil, you want to buy Spectral Helix, and once you're level 12, you can replace Splitting Steel with Spectral Helix. So for people who don't follow along on the pod, you can actually just look at the picture but I highly recommend you download Pob or Path of Building. Now, Act 2, after Chamber of Sins, you want to buy Herald of Ash and Herald of Purity and Blood Rage. So Herald of Ash and Herald of Purity are just like two auras we'll be running, and before you'll be running War Banner. So ideally, you'll be running War Banner, Herald of Purity, and Herald of Ash. If you do have mana issues, you can choose to drop one of the Heralds, probably like Herald of Purity or something like that. After Weaver, you want to pick up faster attacks, and this is actually a pretty big... Increase for your clear speed for Axe if you leap, link Leap Slam to faster attacks. Because Leap Slam is pretty much how you, you move across the map, right? So you can pretty much think of attack speed as movement speed for this build. Now for Axe Mastery right here, you want to take Onslaught Effect. And Two Hand Mastery, you want to take 40% damage to rares and uniques, which will help our bossing out a little. So in the end, we have Blood Rage. Make sure to always activate this in every zone so that you can get frenzy charges which increases your attack speed and thereby your movement speed. So in Act 3, after you do the Crematorium, you want to pick Vulnerability as the curse. Now, unfortunately, Marauder doesn't get access to Poacher's Mark until Act 6, so we'll just have to manually cast Vulnerability for now. 
and then you want to buy anchor and determination and you want to level these in your offhand now after you kill general revicious you buy general's cry and you can start using this after the lab so the reason we want to use general's cry is pretty much so that you can generate rage after you take the first lab so what i mean by that is if you look over here for act three oh i should include these in so act three Warbringer grants you 10 rage per 5 power if you have less than 25 rage. So if you're next to a boss, you'll gain maximum power and therefore you will gain maximum rage. So you get 50 rage every time you use General's Cry. So you want to put General's Cry on your left click. So this is pretty much all the same skills except you have to start casting vulnerability for bosses, which should help out your damage a little bit. Now for Act 4 through 5, after you kill Vol, you can pick Berserk for your quest reward. Now Berserk is super nice in that it gives you a big damage boost. So every time we war cry, right, and we get maximum rage, we can use Berserk at 50 rage, and that should make it so that boss instantly melts, especially if you also pop war banner at the same time. So with this combo, you can pretty much insta-kill bosses. So after you get the Crystal Vein waypoint, you want to do lab, or you can do lab before. A lot of people prefer to do lab as soon as they finish Act 3 or some even before they kill Dominus, right? So it's up to you. So first Ascendancy is Warbringer, and you want to put General's Cry on left click for Rage. Now for the War Cry Mastery, this thing is pretty important. A lot of people ask me, why do you get the War Cry Mastery? So when you finish the first lab, you want to get Call to Arms, so your War Cries are instant, and you want to have the War Cry Mastery, so your War Cries have a minimum of 10 power. What the 10 power means is that even if you have no mobs next to you, as long as you're below 25 Rage, your war cry will always generate 20 rage for you. But if you don't have this cluster here, if you war cry and there's no mobs nearby, you'll generate no rage. So your rage generation will be a lot worse. So basically, the only difference here is you want to fit in Berserk. I should have probably included Berserk here in the ors and buffs section. So after Act 6, so this is Act 4 to 5, you don't really get any skill gems in Act 5. Act 6 is when you can use all of your skill gems. So Act 6, you finish the Twilight Strand, you unlock Lily, and then you can buy all the gems you need. So we want to buy Trinity, we want to buy Castle Damage Taken, Molten Shell, Multi Strike, Inspiration, Flame Dash, Increased Crit Strikes, Nightblade, Poacher's Mark, and Mark on Hit. We want to be leveling the gems Trinity, Crit Strikes, Inspiration, Multi Strike, and our offhand, and Nightblade. So now we can get some Life Nodes on the tree. So I do try to pick up the Life Mastery. So let's see over here. Life Masteries you can generally get at Act 6. You have the Life Mastery over here. And this really just depends on sometimes how good your character is and how strong it is. Because if your character has a lot of life on gear, then you can probably get away without the Life Mastery right away or get going so heavy into life. Now this note is pretty important. This gives you life and mana leech for lovely. And these notes give you Onslaught Effect. And Onslaught Effect is super important because we're using the Onslaught Skill Gem which means that it's pretty much going to be giving us more movement speed and attack speed. Now, what you want to do is you want to link Castle and Damage Taken to Molten Shell, and you want to be running the Determination Aura now instead of the Herald. Now, if you feel like your resists are really, really bad, you can also run Purity of Elements instead of Determination, especially if your gear already has a lot of armor. And it's not the end of the world if you can't fit this Castle and Damage Taken link in because you might have some socket pressure, but Mark on Hit Poacher's Mark is super nice. If you don't have a green green link, you can just manually cast Poacher's Mark on bosses. And it should be also perfectly fine. And also you might want to buy Flame Dash. Flame Dash is slightly better than Frost Blink purely because you get three charges instead of just one. And then you still want to be using Leap Slam and Faster Attacks as your movement skill. So Act, six through, act 7 through 10, you're almost in the final stretch. Like I said, you can use Determination and War Banner. You want to finish Cruel Lab after Act 7. You could also do it before, depending on how you feel. And for the second Ascendancy point, you want to get Aspect of Carnage, right? So Aspect of Carnage gives us pretty much just... What's it called? 40% more damage. It also makes you take 10% increased damage. But this is pretty much like getting another skill link or gem link for your main skill. And it should make you pretty much just completely destroy the content. At this point, the tree, you're pretty much just pathing along all the way over here. So you want to get the Aura Reservation Mastery that gives you reservation efficiency. You also want to get this thing here. I left it out over here. Mark Mastery, Frenzy Charge on Hit. 
And this will also give you culling, which should help you out on bosses a lot, right? So that should be really useful. And you want to finish Merciless Lab before Katava. The reasoning behind this is that Katava is going to give you negative 30 resist. So you generally want to get it out of the way, maybe get all of the skill points out of the way so that your character will be as strong as possible when you're killing Katava. And for the third lab, we'll be taking Flawless Savagery, which is this node here, which is, gives you a lot of flat fizz. This is actually useful later on for Lightning Strike because you do convert a per percentage of flat fizz to Lightning Damage. And it gives you crit and crit multi for when you swap over to, what's it called, to crit claw, right? So pretty much the same aura as War Banner, Ancestral Protector, Determination, Blood Rage, General's Cry, Berserk, and you can fit in Herald of Purity later on if you do get the Reservation Efficiency Mastery. And you have Mark on Hit Potress Mark still with the movement skills. So now you might be wondering how do we actually swap over to the Claw? So now we pretty much just want to swap over the Claw and play Trinity Helix Nightblade. So we want to respect you to the new tree. And in order to swap over to the Claw, you first need a Claw, right? So you need to get a Claw and you need to get a Shield. Now you can pretty much just use any Claw with some LE damage, the flat LE damage, preferably Lightning and Cold damage. And you want to craft it with Essences or you can pretty much just run a live search and look for a Claw of like 200 or 300 LE DPS. And you can craft on attack speed or something like that. Now for the Claw Mastery, you want to be running Nightblade Elusive Effect and Dagger Mastery Elusive grants 40% crit multi. And this is really important. This is what allows you to get a bunch of multi on your skill. And also I do tend to run the Projectile Mastery over here. And this Projectile Mastery is pretty use useful because it gives you 20% increased damage for each enemy pierced. And because Spectral Helix has 100% pierce built in, this should help out a bit on clear, right? So pretty much we respect all of the two-handed nodes that we used to have. So all of these nodes right here, right here, right here, right here, and the axe nodes over here. We should have enough regrets, give or take. If you don't have enough regrets, you can also do some of the respect quests. But I think you should get around like 15 regrets throughout the campaign to respect everything that you need or 16 regrets. And you just put all of those points into the claw mastery, the dagger mastery, and these crit nodes over here. And you should be set for the claw build, right? So for the claw links, we are using spectral helix, night blade, inspiration, trinity, and increased crit strikes. Now you might be noticing that this is a huge focus on crit. And in order for the build to work, you have to have high crit to proc Nightblade to get elusive. So you want to be running Helix, Nightblade, Inspiration, Trinity, and Crit Strikes. And for here, you want to do Defiance Banner, Ancestral Protector, Determination, General's Cry, Berserk, and Wrath. And then in your other aura, you want to be running Anger, Divine Blessing, Increased Duration, and Life Tap. And this is something that you'll have to press every now and then, once every 20 seconds to get uh, extra damage boost. So you can pretty much see here, most of your damage will be coming from your auras, Wrath, and Anger which should give you a decent amount of flat damage even if your claw is pretty bad. Now for the mark on hit, you actually want to swap it over to Assassin's Mark and movement skills are Whirling Blades and Flame Dash. And something you should start running is Withering Step and you could technically start spamming it to reset it. The thing about Withering Step is if you have bad crit, it might be a little bit harder to reproc the elusive. So you should try to fit in Withering Step only when you have high enough crit chance so that you can maintain elusive effect pretty much 24-7 uptime, right? So next up, we have the trillion dollar question, which is when can I actually swap the lightning strike? Most people start complaining to me, especially if I'm streaming, they're always asked, when can I swap the lightning strike? I'm not having fun on Helix. And the simple answer is, it's hard to say, right? It depends on your character, how strong it is, how good your jewelry is, how much damage you're doing. So for lightning strike, you kind of want a good elemental claw. You want like 1.8 plus attack speed with like two flat elemental damage rolls. And you also need to have Vol Lightning Strike. You can't just use the regular Lightning Strike gem. You need to have the Vol component. And you should not swap the Lightning Strike if you don't have at least a 5 link. You need a 5 link for damage. And you kind of want to take Tribal Fury for Strike additional nearby enemies until you get it on the Glove Eldritch Implicit. So you can see here, this is the Tribal Fury node over here. And once you use Lightning Strike, you want to swap your tree nodes over to Fortify and when you swap the Lightning Strike, you pretty much just swap the tree to the other pop in my Lightning Strike Berserker video guide. 
So you can see here your main skill will be Vol, Lightning Strike, Nightblade, Inspiration, Trinity, Increased Crit Strikes. Now if you do somehow get a 6 link, you can throw an Ancestral Call. And that should help you out. You don't need to take Tribal Fury on the tree. And everything else is pretty much identical except you have this. Uh, except you pretty much just switch in Spectral Helix for Vol, Lightning Strike, right? So pretty much Lightning Strike just depends on damage, right? If you have enough damage and it feels good enough and you probably will not have the damage until you have at least a 5 or 6 link, then you should not swap, right? But once you swap over to Lightning Strike, as long as the two skills are similar in damage and you do have enough damage, then it should feel miles better in terms of map clear. So lastly, before we depart, a lot of people ask like, what should I actually buy for upgrades? And these are the most important early game upgrades. Interrogation is generally a pretty expensive item because you have to kill Delirium bosses and it will take a little bit of time for people to start doing Delirium bosses and putting Delirium orbs on the map. But what Interrogation does is it gives you pretty much 100% crit as soon as you slot this jewel into your jewel socket. Before, you could also use Gale Sight as an alternative and this grants you Brittle, but it also still allows you to shock, right? So a lot of times Gale Sight is actually more damage than Interrogation, but using Gale Sight means you lock your helmet slot, which is a pretty big slot because you could use the goal for shrines, or you can use a Blizzard Crown for flat cold damage, right? And because you're using a unique, you also can't use any Eldritch Implicits. Now, next up, we have the Berserk Effect Helm. The Berserk Effect Helm is pretty good. If you can find like some cheap helm with the Berserk buff effect, this is a pretty big increase in clear speed and damage because Berserk gives you attack speed, it gives you movement speed, and it gives you percent attack damage, which are all more multipliers. Perseverance is probably one of the first items I would try to buy. I think it's one of the most realistic items to buy first. And what Perseverance does is it pretty much gives you 200% attack damage. But what it means, you have to run Grace, right? So if you don't have enough aura reservation efficiency to drop, uh, to run Grace on top, then you will probably need to drop like Wrath or something. And it should still be more damage with Perseverance, right? So just switch out this damage aura for Grace. Now, another thing to notice about like running Wrath is that you might not have enough int because int, you actually need around like 155 int to run this this aura. So keep that in mind, and you might need some intelligence on your gear. Now, another huge upgrade is Jewelry. Jewelry is a huge source of damage with flat damage and percent elemental damage rolls. So if you can try to set up some live searches for some Jewelry with life, resist, and flat Ellie damage, then that could be a huge source of damage, right? And make sure you anoint your necklace with something cheap. Now, lastly, you want to try to get a Corrupted Six Link with the right color. Usually, a Corrupted Six Link with the right colors goes for like 20 to 30 Chaos early league. And it's kind of better than a Tabula. It gives you some stats. So try to set up a live search of a Corrupted Six Link with the colors you need. You can also try to have some leeway because you can use like a different color. Like you can use, I don't know, like crit damage maybe if you really wanted to, if you can get a cheap chest. So make sure to get a 6 link. A 6 link is probably one of the biggest damage upgrades along with Perseverance Belt. And Gale Sight is also a huge damage upgrade. So these are the main things you should, you should target. And of course, there's going to be Omni. But Omni is something you'll probably buy a little bit later on. A lot of people do think that item will be kind of expensive due to the nerf of the drop rate of it. So hopefully this gives you a pretty good plan about what to do. Make sure to check out the POB. If you want to follow along, I did try to make it as detailed as possible. And you should have enough respects. And if you don't, just use like a few regrets. I think at most it might be over by two or three regrets, right? So try to get in a practice run before the league start. It will help out a lot. And get a feel for the character. Spectral Helix is painful to play while leveling, but it is by far the fastest leveling build and leveling skill, right? But thanks for watching, everyone. I hope this has helped you out. If you like the content, be sure to like and subscribe. And I hope you find more Mirrors, Exalts, and Mage Plus than me. And see you next time. Bye.